curious to see uh, your take on the Carvana. Um, I have no inside information, uh, uh, none whatsoever. All I do is observe and think and look and watch, right? And of course, they lost 98% of their market cap uh, over the past X amount of months, right? And they did buy, uh, and I thought at the time, and I still believe it or not, I know everybody's going to think I'm retarded. I believe until today, not necessarily for reconditioning, but um, I think there's an opportunity for Carvana, if they do it correctly, um, to uh, do some very interesting things with the Odessa acquisitions. My personal point of view, um, and I still don't believe that it was necessarily a completely you know, stupid uh, uh, idea. I, I believe there's some things that can help uh, uh, Carvana in, in the market moving forward, uh, not offering, uh, I, th I think they can do some things. I think there's some things they will be able to do with fee adjustment. As I said a million times in the past, we as car dealers are all whores. If there's cars available and there's a reason for us to buy them at one place, not another, um, when, it, when you're talking about auction buying, fees are a major thing. So Odessa was the perpetrator uh, years and years ago of the hidden fee. You buy a car, and they club you in the back of the head with some fee that they, they wouldn't post. Mannheim, uh, unfortunately, followed suit where when you buy a car, you have no concept of what the fee was. From the beginning of time, when, when Moses was actually buying and selling cars at the auction, um, there was a very clear fee ski, uh, fee thing at uh, under five hundred. It was a dollar fifty, uh, you know, over ten thousand. Which very few cars for ten thousand. It was seventy four dollars. You follow me? And then we got to a point where we had a general manager come in from uh, uh, used to be at Odessa, and it, it, br brilliant idea. Let's not tell dealers what they're paying for a car when they bought it. Could be the dumbest single thing that anybody could do because what you're doing is putting the approach avoidance complex into a buyer's brain that you're just hoping and praying that it's not going to be 850, which it is. It's 850 to buy the car. So that on top of, see, don't forget, MMR doesn't show you what the price of the car plus the fee is. It shows you one number. That's what the last bid was, not what the dealer paid for the car. And if anybody doesn't think that that has something to do with the, uh, you know, like circumstances, you also need some smelling salts. You follow me? Um, my feeling is the uh, the smartest thing they could possibly do is redu when they're selling their cars at their auction, uh, well, at a DESA auction that they own, but, you know, it's picket fence. They don't actually operate the auctions necessarily at the moment. Um, I believe that when they make their fee, let's just pick a number, 200 across the board, and put that on every condition report and on every sale disclosure. Um, all the people that have uh, uh, pitched their, you know, their, their shovel in the sand saying, I ain't doing business with them people. They're my competitor. Guess what? All of that nonsense goes out the window, and I believe uh, they have an opportunity to actually have a flood of cars that they will get at a full market value or more for because of the competitive um, um, best end user bidding, uh, knowing that you're paying a deuce and a half in a fee, you're getting what you actually thought you were going to get. See, this is the other benefit they're going to have selling their own cars at an Odessa auction. They own the course. They're not pointing fingers. Well, let me check. Let me do an if. Let me go ask my aunt's uncle if I could maybe sell this car someday. I, I only need three grand more for it. Now, I think if they use normal, what we've proven to be extraordinarily successful tactic, they have total transparency, 100% trust, 100% conversion rate. Um, I think that this purchase of Odessa could turn out to be what turns them around? It's wholesale. It's not retail. I think their opportunity to turn around the brand, and they did an unbelievable job of branding. And of course, it's dropping because the brand is dropping in, in value because everybody knows they're going bankrupt. And I don't believe that happens. If it did happen, I think there's going to be a couple of things that could happen there that could to continue the concept that Odessa will be a, a, a great thing for them have to have uh, uh, actually bought. I believe it all heartedly. The, I've, I've watched some people float in the concept around it. Uh, 
you know, Amazon is buying uh, Caravana. I would be totally flabbergasted if they would be silly enough to do that. Let me just finish with this. There's never been an outside entity enter our industry and actually come up with new or better ways to do what car dealers have done since since Moses was, you know, a, a uh, an Uber driver, let's just say. Like from the beginning of time, um, there's never been someone who's coming out uh, from outside our industry to come and show us how to do it better. They, you, you know, they modified this or that. You got to kiss the customer's rear end a little bit more, and you got to drop it off, maybe. Uh, so that's fine. That's that's all good stuff. But I need to see one of the disrupt gurus come in and show a better way to actually buy and sell a car. I, I don't see it. Uh, the online uh, efforts to uh, dealer to deal. No, it's still simulcast an auctioneer, a willing seller and a willing buyer period. End of the story. Nothing to talk about. There is no variation to that. That is the best way to actually uh, liquidate commoditize vehicles. And I don't believe it's ever going to change. And I don't believe it's ever going to be without, you know, an auctioneer counting a card down, looking into somebody's eyeballs potentially, and knowing how many people are online for that competitive necessity of testosterone-driven bidding. In other words, beyond rationality, you know you can watch, see who's bidding, and you all of a sudden, whether you're thinking about it or not, you're picturing in your head who that person is and why they could pay more than you can, and isn't that a card that you would rather have on your lot than them? It's just what's happened since the beginning of time. That's not going away. Hiding things uh, from fees to who was actually participating <clears throat> could be the single stupidest misunderstanding of what professionals do when they want to sell or buy uh, that has ever existed in our in our business. And I'll leave it with, I don't picture anybody um, with uh, um, AI and a new platform of the same thing in a different version that have never bought or sold cars coming up with an idea that will be better. And therefore, I don't believe Amazon would be stupid enough to get in a business that they simply couldn't understand. If their, if their existence relied on them hiring the people to actually show them the light, never, never is it going to work. It's never going to work because the same problems exist. Who's fixing it when it's broke? Who's talking to the customer when they're pissed? Who's picking it up and dropping it off? If you think that spaghetti's easy to do, you never did it before. You see that? And if you did that nationwide, and that would actually, in my estimation, harm their brand um, beyond repair. They have an unbelievable brand. I use Amazon every day, 42 times a day to buy anything, right? And because it happens, it happens fast. And when something's broke, you can say, hey, it broke and give it back and all that, right? You're not doing that with $54,000, four-year-old uh, BMW 7 Series. It ain't happening. It's it's not happening. So the concept that, that, that somebody like Amazon's jumping in, and I think Mannheim's smart enough, they would never dream of doing it because they really do understand at an operational level that's uh, it's not possible. So. For those reasons, back to the question of uh, the big C, um, these people that operate and own that company, you can say a lot of different things, but one thing you can't say is that, they, they're, that they're not smart. They're very smart people. Uh, uh, I would say, you know, start with the roots of ugly duckling. I remember it well. And, and learning along the way and, and the whole drive time thing. It's, it really is like kind of unique in the industry, how they do it and how they continue to succeed at it. And and then with all of the things that went wrong with uh, recently with uh, the idea that we're going to change it, I, I think if they're if they're if they have the the wiggle room, let's say, and the insight and foresight of uh, what impact they could have on the wholesale side of the business. Uh, I think it could not only bring them out of it, I think it could turn it into a, um, you know, a true disruptive uh, force in the wholesale industry. And I believe that wholeheartedly with no uh, uh, um, ulterior motive or no nefarious uh, uh, um, meaning behind what I'm saying. I think they have the ingredients that 
Now, can they execute it? It's a different story, right? But I think they have the ingredients to turn it into something that's going to be good for car dealers in general. Um, uh, so you can laugh. You're, you can roll around on the floor laughing what a moron I am. That's possible. Um, but I believe it, uh, the, the, that's uh, something you might see this year. It's possible. I believe that. They're not getting sold to somebody bigger because uh, it won't work. It, it simply won't work. There is no used car factory where they can order 742 Vs and 18 of those. No, it's onesie, twosie, onesie, onesie, twosie, onesie, 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 onesie. And that requires um, incredible, unbelievable dedication, skill, will uh, that I don't think you're going to find in a um, – you know, a company that's bigger, that it's not their prime business, that it's not their focus. I don't, I really don't have any fear of that happening. I don't see it, man. Too much, Shoney? It's going to be another, no, it's great. It's going to be another uh, interesting year for sure. So thanks for that, yeah. Bob. And we'll catch you next time. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everybody have a spectacular year. They're going to tighten up the belt strap. Just picture it as 2017 and go to work, daddy-o. See ya. <laughs>